Kona, what do you think? <laughs> what are you doing, Kona? What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzer with NeverState.com, and welcome to today's video where I'm going to give you guys four training tips for those of you with physically demanding jobs. Now, before you guys click off the video, when I say physically demanding job, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're working with a jackhammer, wearing a hard hat, or carrying logs, or you're walking off a construction job site. There are a lot of jobs out there that are a lot physically demanding than you think they may be. Like, I personally know a lot of nurses with very, very physically demanding jobs. I know restaurant servers who work their butts off or on their feet all day, and then by the time they're done all that, getting a good workout in is very, very tough for them. So I too have been part of the club for a very, very long time. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna give you guys four tips that will hopefully help you or anyone else that you know that complains all the time about how their job wears them out and they can't get in the gym to put it in good work. Now from an age way too young to be safe or legal whatsoever, I have worked labor for my dad's construction company and that lasted in one form or another until I was 26 years old where I moved over to some of the worst hours and night shift and all kinds of shift work that you could possibly imagine. And these days, I am actually kind of just an amateur lumberjack slash groundskeeper slash landscaper slash park ranger. So trust me, I do understand your pain and I've been at this a long time. So there are a couple things that I picked up that hopefully I can share with you that by the end of this will help you get through your tough manual labor job and yet still help you make progress at the gym. So the very first tip that I wanna share with you guys is triage. And triage in the idea that you need to know and be able to prioritize where your mental and physical energy is going to go. So a teacher walks into a class with a big empty mason jar and she puts it down on her desk and she looks at the students and she doesn't say a word. Then she proceeds to fill up the mason jar with a bunch of big clunky rocks and then she asks the class, is this jar full? And the class all nod, yes, that, that jar is full of rocks. So then she pulls out a smaller bag full of smaller rocks and pebbles and she dumps that all in between the cracks of the bigger rocks into the mason jar, pats it down, she says, class, is this jar full? And now they're much more hesitant. They're like, okay, I see what's happening. And some say yes, some say no. So then she pulls out a bag of some fine sand and she dumps that in the mason jar. And then that fills up all of the little cracks, everything. She really packs in there, tamps it down. She's like, okay, now this is full, right? Most of the class says yes, but then she pulls out another jar of water and pours the entire jar of water, which fills the entire thing until it starts overflowing. She says, now we have a full jar. Now, the idea of this is to teach you about time, but what it really is about in this example is figuring out what your big rocks are because your mason jar can only hold so much energy uh, when it comes to your physical and your mental kind of capacity. So if you have a job that takes a lot of that away already, then your jaw already has a bunch of big rocks in it. So you need to figure out which movements at the gym are your big payoffs, right? What are your big rocks? And then once you get your big rocks in there, what do you still have the mental energy and the physical energy to do? How much assistance can you put in there? How much can you not, right? How much sand are you gonna need to remove? How much water is gonna need to be removed? You're gonna need to look at your workouts and your training just in its entirety and figure out what needs to go, what's important, what's not important, and what can you cut because a physical job is going to take a lot of that energy and time and just all of that away. The second tip I wanna give you guys is control what you can control. So think about things like your calories, right? Since you're doing a manual labor job or a physically intense job, you're going to be burning more calories just throughout the day. So you need to find a way to eat more food. Now, when I was doing construction with my dad, my dad does not take lunch breaks. He doesn't take breaks at all. If it's a 10 hour day, we work 10 hours. We really don't even speak because he just, he's a worker. That's what he does and that's what he instilled in me. So I had to find foods that were kind of easy to digest because when I, the physical labor I was doing involved a bunch of leaning over and picking things up and stuff. So I didn't have time. I didn't have a microwave that I could go warm things up. So what would happen is every single morning before we left for work, I would make four peanut butter and honey sandwiches as well as four protein shakes and have 12 fish oil caps with me every single day. And by the end of that work day, they would all be gone because I could literally slam a protein shake while I was taking a bathroom break or I could walk around eating the sandwich while I was carrying lumber with the other hand. So there's ways to get around it guys, but you need to be getting the calories in or else you're not gonna have the strength and the recovery when it comes time for working out. Something else 
that you can easily control is going to be your hydration levels, right? So even if you're not sweating your face off all day long, you don't feel like you're thirsty, you need to continually drink water because if you're dehydrated at all, then your physical performance goes down drastically. If you do have a physically demanding job, I would highly recommend that you do some sort of recovery. Now I have an entire playlist of recovery options that you guys can do. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here for that. But if you're spending maybe an hour or two while you're watching Netflix or whatever you're doing to come down at the end of night to spend that time doing some recovery stuff, you'll be shocked at how much that will help your physical training as well as making you not hate your life so much during your physical labor intensive job. And then along with that, you're also going to want to avoid things that will hinder your recovery, like drinking too much alcohol. I know a lot of people are not gonna wanna hear that, but guys, alcohol messes up your sleep and your recovery so much. If you do a physical labor job, you really can't get away with doing it too, too often if you're serious about your training goals. You guys in this are gonna have to take things like your sleep and your recovery a lot more seriously than someone else who just has like a desk job who doesn't have the physical stressors on their body from day to day. And the third tip that I wanna share is be a smart scheduler. So when I was doing construction or even now, I try to plan my hardest workouts on my off days. When I'm not doing work and I don't have a ton of other physically demanding stuff to do, that's when I try to plan my hardest, hardest days. And then also, if I know, like looking out a week, if I'm like, man, next Wednesday and Thursday are gonna be hard days for me, then there's no way they're gonna plan my deadlift PR after a day like that, right? So um, I just think you need to be smart about that. And another way that you can do this is also stretching out your split. So let's say, Currently, you train four days out of a seven-day week. Well, then you just stretch that a little bit. So now maybe you train four days out of an eight-day week or a nine-day week or whatever you have to do just so you can put in a couple extra rest days between strength sessions so you can make sure that you're fully recovered so you don't get injured or so you can just be in there optimally. For some people, even though they might hate it, you might need to drop your volume or your frequency. So if you're going to the gym five days a week, you might need to drop back to four. If you're going four days a week, you might need to drop back to three, or maybe you don't need to drop a day at all, but maybe if you're one of those people who benches like four days a week, maybe now you bench three days a week, or if you're benching three days a week, now maybe you're benching two days a week. Look, you just need to keep your recovery ahead of the training and you need to count for your hard labor job on top of that. And then the final point about scheduling is figuring out when your body works best for you. When do you perform optimally, right? So for a lot of people that I know with manual labor jobs, they end up having to train before they go to work in the morning. Now, I know a lot of people with manual labor jobs are on the road before the sun even comes up, so that means they need part a, of a 24-hour gym or have their own setup so that they are working from two in the morning till three in the morning or three in the morning till four in the morning and then they're out the door, right? So there are people that do that and that works out for them because their training is more important than their job and they would rather have the effort go into that and I salute all of you. For me personally, my dad woke up way, way, way too early. We were on the road by 4 a.m. and at that time, the world didn't even have 24 hour gyms. So my choice was to go directly after because the way that I personally work, guys, is if I go home after a hard manual labor day and I sit down on the couch, I don't unsit right like once i stop i stay stopped so i need to keep that momentum going so i would have to pack all my food and my workout and everything like that and i would go straight from the construction job site right to the locker room where i would change and then i would go get my workout in and then go home from there there are a few individuals in the world who actually like to come home after their manual labor job sit down on the couch take a nap eat some food rest up relax some and then go back to the gym once it is all cleared out and all that rush is there and they work out at night and that works out for them. So guys, just figure out what is best for you, for your body, for your sleep schedule, for your recovery schedule, whatever it is, and then build that into a habit. Because trust me, if you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning to work out, you're not gonna want to do that for more than the first week. It's going to need to become a habit. It's gonna need to become something that you just wake up and do. If you're coming home from a very, very hard day and you're gonna say, man, I don't feel like stopping by the gym, if you already have your gym bag and your food and your clothes and everything in your car with you, then you have one less excuse, right? Do not give yourself the chance to stop and, and just give yourself reasons to not go. And then finally, the fourth tip that I'd like to share with you guys is be smarter than you want to be. Now, this very first part doesn't really apply too much here, but I would tell you guys, always try to make the decision about the intensity of how hard your workout's going to be once you're in it, because some of the best workouts of my entire life I've shown up to after I was absolutely dog tired 
from work. And then conversely, there have been times when I've literally rested for like two days just for one single deadlift attempt. And then when I got to gym, I was flat, it wasn't good and, and it didn't work out for me. So guys, before you make the decision, don't go in with like a self-fulfilling prophecy of like, man, I'm so shot today, the workout's gonna suck, blah, blah. Of course you're gonna say those things, whatever. Don't make the decision of what's going to happen until you're in that battle of the weights and you're starting to sweat and you kind of get going and you get some energy going and stuff like that. At that point, you make that decision. Now, if you do not have it, you need to be smart because the worst thing you can do when you're in a hole is continue digging. And if you go into the gym and you are absolutely smashed, you try to lift things and you're as weak as a kitten, then it is not the time to continue to try to grind in and see what you can do because that is just going to further prolong the trauma and the damage and your recovery. For days like this, I've actually created a template because I've had quite a few of them in my training career. And I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below. And it is a video called How to Save a Bad Training Day. And the basic idea is it tells you exactly what you need to go in, get done, bare minimum, and get the heck out of there so you can get back and start recovering as fast as possible. And then finally, some of you, not all of you, but some of you may want to stay out of that red zone of 85% of your warm rep max and above because it's really those reps that are going to take the longest to recover from your muscles, your joints, your CNS, all that. It's just going to take a little bit longer. And with a physically demanding job, it's going to take even longer. You may want to consider taking something like high dose fish oil or a joint supplement like that's always helped me throughout my life. If you guys need ideas for that, I have links in the description box down below. But really guys, you need to think about what is going to take the most from your body and also is going to make you not hate your life at your physically demanding job. Because if you absolutely crush it all the time in the gym, there's gonna be times when you show up to that job and just, it is eight to 10 hours of suck. So there you guys go. This video was actually a direct answer to a question from a viewer named Gene who wrote me, said that they just got their first physically demanding job and was looking for tips. So this is directly it. If you guys have ideas or have some questions that you think would be a good video, please email me at neverstateatgmail.com and you never know because a video might be made of that exact thing. I actually have another one in the works right now that is probably going to be another viewer requested video. So I thank you guys so much and it helps me come up with the content that you guys wanna see. So it helps us both out and uh, I really, really do appreciate when I can get some content ideas from you guys. So there you go guys, like I said, I have been part of the manual labor slash hard training crew pretty much since the beginning of my career. So I have learned a couple things and hopefully I said someday that will help you guys apply to your own lives or your own situations to make your training a little bit better. Maybe even you could show this somebody who does complain about their job all the time and says they can't get it done to take away some of those excuses. So I do thank you guys absolutely for who you are, for what you do, for everything guys. It's just, it's so awesome and I'm so thankful that I get to do this. So I will catch you guys later in the week. Until I do go out to something amazing realize, keep working hard people, be nice to each other, please. I'll see you then. Come on, what do you think? <laughs> what are you doing, Connor?